Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. Lots taking place through the next two weeks, of course, Halloween, and then it's going to be bonfire night. So is it trick or treat as far as the weather is concerned? Let's see. Here's the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 29th. And at the outset, it's a fairly quiet picture. There is a little bit of patchy rain in places, but most parts of the UK are dry. The reason is because high pressure is building and through the coming days, it becomes the dominant feature. It really is going to be a big influence for much of the forecast period. As we head towards the weekend, there could be a little bit of patchy rain there affecting the north, but it's high pressure continuing to rule the roost. Through the following days, not a great deal changes. The risk of rain highest in the northwest or far northwest. So for most places, it's going to be a continuation of the settled conditions. And even at the end of the first week here, just going into Wednesday, the 6th of November, Weather fronts are starting to encroach from the west, but just really affecting the far western part of Ireland and northwestern Scotland. So it looks like a lot of stability really developing through the coming days. Here's the upper air temperature and jet stream sequence, UK just there. The orange is indicating warm air aloft at about 1500 meters above sea level, the blues and purples are the cold air masses and the mottled shaded area there, the jet stream dividing them and it's to the north of the UK and as I run this you see that through the first week it stays there for the majority of the time and for a brief period some green shading moves down from the north so somewhat cooler air but it's really yellows and oranges which are firmly remaining in place for most of the time so Temperatures at about 1500 meters above sea level, well, well above the 30 year average through week one. Now that doesn't always translate to conditions down at the surface, particularly when the days are increasingly short like they are in November and December. So what can we expect? Here are a few charts to illustrate. This is for Wednesday the 30th. Temperatures ranging from about nine Celsius in Northern Scotland up to about 15 or 16 in Southern England. So reasonably mild for the time of year. In fact, distinctly mild really. Forwards to Halloween, trick or treat. I would say treat. This is for nine GMT, relatively mild, 10 to 13 Celsius. Some clear periods developing. It could be around, there could be fog as well, so that would add to the spooky feel. Very promising. Forwards to Saturday, more of the same. Temperatures perhaps a fraction lower, and then into the early part of next week, more of the same. Settled, dry, cloud amounts varying. One thing I would highlight is that some of these charts which I've just shown may well be underestimating the amount of cloud which there will be. So sunny periods perhaps not as extensive as these are suggesting. Fog as well is something to look out for. It will be waxing and waning through the coming nights. So I'm just using this particular chart from UKV to illustrate the potential really. It's for 06 GMT on Saturday, the dark shading there in Western Britain, Northern Ireland is where it thinks the risk of fog is the greatest, but that will change from night to night. Overnight lows, they will vary, but some very mild nights are likely, especially early on. The charts here illustrate the expected range. On the left, it's Thursday night into Friday morning, double figures across the UK. On the right, it's Saturday night into Sunday. You can see there it's significantly chillier now in southern and central regions. Single figures, just the outside chance of a touch of ground frost. And I think that really sums things up for the week. There could be patchy ground frost on some nights, but the risk isn't likely to be widespread. Rainfall. These are the aggregates for days not to five from the ECM and GFS models. I think it's just worth taking a closer look at them because it's not often you'll see this. 
dry across virtually the whole of the UK according to both of the models. It's really just northern and western Scotland where rain amounts are significant. Now let's jump ahead to the 0 to 10 day charts. It's incredible really how little the GFS chart on the right there has changed. Even ECM which has bumped up the totals in the west is still showing a mostly dry picture across central and eastern areas through the 0 to 10 day period. So a lot of dry weather if these are correct, but in more general terms how do the deterministic models compare with each other towards the end of the first week? Here is the GFS, Tuesday the 5th of November, bonfire night of course, and high pressure is dominating. It's centered to the south and to the east, but disturbances in the Atlantic are being held at bay. Good news for the fireworks, I would suggest, because it looks like a mostly dry and calm picture. The Canadian model, also high pressure dominated, German icon, high pressure a little bit further east, but the Atlantic still being kept away. The European ECM, high pressure almost slap bang over the UK. And finally, the UK Met Global. One or two differences here. There are signs of disturbances starting to encroach from the West, at least in the days which were to follow. But at this point, it's looking mostly settled. And I think taking those together, you will rarely see a stronger signal for high pressure to be dominating the UK's weather at one week ahead. With the winds coming up from the south, the southwest, it's not looking cold. The air mass temperatures at about 1500 meters, well above the 30 year average. But there's always a chance at this time of year with the very short days that values at the ground level can fall sharply, for example, under clear and calm conditions. A temperature inversion develops, that's where it's cold down at the surface and warm or at least relatively warm aloft. But I don't really think the conditions at this point are looking ideal for an inversion or at least not a marked one to develop. So overnight lows probably relatively high with quite a lot of cloud around daytime maximums close to or a little bit above the average would be my guess at this point. Now with that strong signal for high pressure towards the end of the first week, how do things develop as we go through week two? As ever, even though the signal at the end of the first week is a strong one, at this range it really is just about the trends and the probabilities. Starting with the 16 day GEFS plot for London. Now with saying what I just have done about trends and probabilities, you won't really see a stronger signal than this at one to two weeks ahead for 850 HPA temperatures to be well above the 30 year average. All of the runs really, just the odd straggler, are going for values well above that thick line, which black line, which is a 30 year norm. It's just towards the end there where a few start to break away and indicate the chance of colder air moving down across the south. But that is way above average, a very, very strong anomaly indeed. In terms of rainfall across the bottom, a few spikes appear through the second week, but it is mostly dry. But I think there is some significance to those spikes because they suggest that weak weather fronts may be cutting into that area of high pressure, which is remaining dominant. Not bringing a great deal of rain, but bringing quite a lot of cloud. Two meter temperature data tables. The yellows dominate, although later on the amount of light green increases. That's maximums of between 6 and 10, but it's the yellows, 11s to 15s, which are making up the bulk of, uh, of the columns. Early on, a little bit of the orange there, 16 to 20. The overnight lows, mo mostly in the 6 to 10 Celsius category. A little bit of dark green shows up towards the end there. Those would be runs leading to low enough temperatures for ground frost potentially. Up to Manchester. I'm not going to talk about this for long because it's really a carbon copy of the London chart. The two meter temperature data tables for Manchester, very, very similar to maximums a little bit lower, minimums a little bit lower, but not much difference. Finally, Glasgow, unusual because it's way above average across the top here as well. It's very consistent with the Manchester and London charts. Often when we get to the northwest of the UK, if there's a big positive anomaly in the south or further south, 
at least at this point, the Atlantic maintains its influence and temperatures are therefore close to the average. Not the case on this update. There are more, a few more rain spikes on this one than there were on the previous two charts. It doesn't really look wet though. I'd say a risk of rain, disturbances pushing in, bringing in patchy outbreaks of rain, but all in all, relative to the average, it's quite a dry outlook. Two meter temperatures, the amount of yellow there decreases, the amount of light green increases, and the overnight low is fairly even throughout, a little bit of blue towards the very end there, but not a cold scenario. Rainfall, the ECM charts here show the percentage chance of five millimeters or more of rain falling on the first three days of the second week. It's just really the northwest where there is a significant chance even there. It's only in the 20 to 40 percent bracket. But if you look across much of the UK, it's white or very light blue, which is indicating between a naught and 10 percent chance. The following three days, the uh, risk has increased in the northwest, particularly western Scotland. But really, at this range, to see so much white shading and light blue, it is unusual because ensemble spread normally means things start to average out when you're looking basically two weeks ahead. It isn't the case here. There's still a strong signal for dry conditions in much of the UK. The mean surface level pressure data table for York, generated using data from the GEFS model, reinforces the General message, high pressure dominates. You can see the amount of orange in the columns there. It actually increases for the first four days. Those are runs going for between 1,026 to 1,040 millibar, so well above the norm. Even towards the end of the second week, there's still a significant amount of orange, though it's, it's dipping. And really, just a small number of runs bringing in areas of low pressure, those the greens, blues, and purples. So, staying in a minority even at the very end. The GEFS mean surface level pressure snapshot chart for Friday V8, so it's generated by averaging out all of the individual runs, has high pressure centered to the east, to the slightly to the south but the Atlantic is still being held at bay. It's a mostly settled scenario across the UK. Just a chance, a greater chance of rain into the far north, the far northwest. So to summarize, week one, mostly settled with the risk of rain restricted to the far north and northwest. Patchy fog will form on some nights, and where it does, it could well be slow to lift. Temperatures generally above the average, although some cooler nights are likely. Ground frost forms in some places, but I don't expect it to be widespread. Week two, the mostly settled theme continues, although some light rain is likely in places. Perhaps more changeable though in the northwest, particularly later on. Temperatures remain close to or even a little bit above the average, although the chance of chilly nights remains. So uh, there we have it. A lot of dry and quiet weather through the next two weeks as high pressure continues to dominate. I started off by saying trick or treat for Halloween and bonfire night. I think the answer is probably treat. Dry conditions for Halloween look as though they will continue through to and beyond bonfire night, at least in most of the United Kingdom. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, if you did, then please consider hitting the like button below and of course subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already, then you'll not miss any of my future updates. Also, of course, remember to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye. <laughs>